everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com using time-honored techniques to understand modern markets featuring daily tactical analysis videos of the S&P 500 index. Before we get going on this, I just need to remind you that uh, the website and this video, anything you hear me say or write, is for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I control lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts. So let's look at the S&P. Okay, let's start out looking at an hourly chart. And uh, what I want us to see from this is is just to remind ourselves is that this market has been uh, setting up uh, channels and we had a channel back in uh, the middle of December that was down then we had an upwards channel albeit a little bit of a stretch because of these huge gaps um, that we had on on some days then we had a fairly clearly defined downward channel and now we've come out of that with a large gap up and then we jumped into this channel running up. Now the, the confusing thing is last Friday um, we broke down from this channel right here and then we came back into it uh, on the, the first trading day of this week. Okay, and let me adjust the chart there just a little bit. There we go. And, uh, and then today we regained that channel again. So it's it's a little a little funky what's going on here, but um, I think what we're seeing is there is some underlying strength as a result of what I believe is an inverse head and shoulders pattern right here, and um, remember there are three parts to a head and shoulders pattern. There's the left shoulder, and sometimes they can be a little bit more complex, not just a dip and then a rally. Sometimes it can be a dip and a, a little uh, double uh, shoulder. Then we have the head, which took us down to uh, the 11, uh, about 1159. Then we've got the right shoulder, and... Uh, looks kind of like Dumbo right there. There's the uh, there's the trunk and <laughs> there's the ears. But anyway, make a long story short, uh, here's a breakout. We had a pullback uh, to this uh, neckline that's about 1268. And since then, the market's been going up. And that's what's supposed to happen when you see one of these patterns. Now, what makes this really interesting is the fact that in addition to all of this, uh, what I think is a fairly bullish uh, pattern underneath us, we're also going to be coming upon uh, some uh, what should be uh, some pretty strong resistance. So we'll, we're, we're going to get to find out if the market has what it takes to get through uh, some of these areas of resistance. And briefly, if we uh, back out on the chart, um, the first uh, level we've got is we've got this rising line that has held the channel in check um, since that um, um, low. Oh, didn't need to do that. Since this low back uh, on uh, December 20th, uh, this line extended from these two tops. We've not reached that line yet. Uh, in this small channel. Additionally, um, there is another line, this red line right here. Let me show you what that is. We have to go to a two-hour chart to see that. This red line is a technically important line. Though it has been violated, this line uh, had very clear technical significance throughout the early days and for about three months. Um, after the big um, meltdown from the head and shoulders top. So you can see that uh, the, the, the uh, S&P would, would stay over that line, then it would break it, come up over it, and, it, and then uh, it formed something of a 
head and shoulders top right here and ever since this little pattern in this area broke down uh, the market has not been able to get back over this line so I would expect that line to also offer um, some resistance and then finally we've got this line I'll tell you what just for the sake of clarity let's change this uh, to a different color I'm gonna go to a real I'm gonna go to a dark blue line and let's uh, take a quick look at, uh, at what this one comes from. There's that dark blue line. And it is drawn over the tops of the market high in the fall of 2007 and the market high in uh, spring of 2011. Both of these tops were head and shoulders tops. This one resulted in a lot more selling than this one. But I think it's interesting um, that we have a uh, a fair a, a definite major top back in 2007, and then a top that I would describe is as at least of very important intermediate term significance. Um, and the reason I say that is it has not resulted in the same kind of just total meltdown that this one did. Not yet. It could. But we're keeping an eye on it, and this line is one of those things that's going to help us keep an eye on it. Because as we look at this inverse head and shoulders pattern right here, we can measure the depth of this head, and we know that that is the expected target. Once it breaks out over that neckline, which it did, the expected target now is about 1380. And what makes this very interesting with what the markets are doing right now, in order for this pattern to work, the S&P is going to have to get over this blue line. And I, I, if it does, then I suspect that 1380, uh, when they use the term minimum target, I expect that will, term will probably be appropriate. Because if we get over this blue line, then I'm thinking that's the green light for the markets to keep on going. How far? Well, we got to watch it and see. But, but right now, I would think this line, if taken out, and again, that's going to be uh, roughly in the, uh, well, hold on. That's going to be roughly in the uh, mid-1330s. So, this is what makes this very interesting, the fact that we did get... Um, some weakness that broke this rising channel uh, earlier in the week and please stop doing that to me browser sorry about that had some uh, had some issues there with uh, uh, Safari so anyway uh, as I was saying it's interesting that we had this weakness in this channel uh, late last week and a little bit this week but it looks like the market's trying to get on up there uh, to, to test this area in the 1320s or, or even as high as the mid-1330s. One thing I want to show you real quick is we look at the way things traded today. Um, this is kind of preliminary. It may or may not be a real issue. But I want to show you that all day long, once we gapped up, the market started to trade up in what appears to be a possible what some people call a typhoon flag, and that is a pattern where there is a, 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 a decent move up, and then the market rallies, but it does so in an ever-constricting pattern. These tend to, uh, to uh, set up a downward, uh, a down day. They, they have a tendency to, to set up a fall out of this pattern that... Uh, that at times can be uh, fairly swift. So be on, the, be on the watch out for that. So what are we looking for today? Well, now that we're back above this 1296 line, uh, I'm looking for this maybe. It's been kind of porous here, but maybe this 1296 area still has some importance. And you can see that this rising trend line right here, the market's gapped below it, gapped over it, traded under it, traded over it. So I'm, I'm thinking for some reason this line is starting to lose its touch. So, um, uh, you know, 
if we, in other words, if we trade down underneath this line and, and, and tag this 1296 area and then start to rally back up, the breaking of this line wouldn't really be uh, horribly concerning, to be honest with you. Um, but if, if this line were to break, then, uh, then I'm thinking maybe, maybe that's a, a, of a little bit more concern. So that's about 11 points under where we are right now. Uh, and again, resistance from fairly long term, we're looking at uh, some levels in the high, in the high 1320s to uh, if we can get up in there, also up into the uh, 1330s if this rally can continue that long. But right now, I'm kind of watching this little pattern to see if that's maybe going to set up some weakness. And if that weakness starts to take out some levels of support, then we have to be aware of that and be uh, be uh, be ready to act accordingly, according to your own uh, investing plan. So look, that's kind of it for the day. It, uh, it By the way, it is uh, January 18th, 2012. Thanks for watching the video. And if you get a chance, uh, come on over to uh, sp500chart.com and uh, maybe take a look at the subscription service I have so that you get one of these videos after every day's close. You know, I'll be honest with you, some, sometimes it works absolutely like a charm. Sometimes it's a fairly unclear picture. But the last thing I want to do, if, if you take the trouble to watch these videos, the last thing I want to do is say something and try to sound authoritative in an area when, frankly, I really don't know. So yesterday was one of those days. I didn't know whether it was going to go up or down. Now that we're now that we're going up, we've got some patterns now that we can look at for the very short term as well as for the intermediate and possibly even long term. But uh, but I do want to let you know I care about what what I do. I care about trying to get this right. And in my way of thinking, sometimes getting it right is is to honestly admit that uh, the market is throwing out mixed signals. And it's better to be aware of that and to be cautious than to uh, than to latch on to some false hope or latch on to some false uh, alarm. So look, take care. Thanks again for watching. And uh, there'll be another video tomorrow.